Hey, welcome back to Exodus 32 and today verses 31 and 32. Uh, some pretty extraordinary stuff here. Moses is trying to see if there's any way the people can be brought back into the full uh, alignment with God after their great, great sin. We talked about it the last few mornings. We won't take time, uh, take space with it here. 31 and 32. Then Moses returned to the Lord. He goes up Mount Sinai and they have this, uh, now they have this discussion. So when Moses gets back to God, he says this. Alas, this people has committed a great sin, and they have made a god of gold for themselves. But now, if you will, forgive their sin, and if not, blot me out from your book which you have written. <laughs> ah, wow, what a spirit. Um, I'm not sure these people deserve this, uh, this kind of, but here's Moses. He's standing up for the people. Please forgive them. But if you, you know, you've, if I've found favor in your sight, you know, if, if you don't forgive them, then just blot me out too. Um, that's a pretty remarkable thing that Moses says and does here. So he's putting his life on the line for them. Now, again, he can't make atonement like Jesus can. He's not God. He, he doesn't have a perfect record, right? He has sinned. He, he's not a person who can say, I uh, can bring that. So... Uh, look at this extraordinary, though, thing that Moses does. Now, remember that uh, it wasn't too many times back here before this, when Moses is on the mountain with God, God informs Moses, by the way, the people down there have gone into full apostasy mode, and I'll tell you what, I'm just thinking about destroying them, and I'll make a new nation from you. And at that point, you know, Moses said, no, no, don't do that. You know, what will the heathen say? The, 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 the heathen will say that you brought the people out to destroy them. Think of your great name. Think of your, you know, your, the, the witness, the testimony of your character. Let's, let's, uh, let's sort this out. So Moses has already shown that he himself is not, he's not interested in being, you know, a, a Abraham number two. And just let's start over and make everything with my people. And in fact, Moses' people are just as messed up as everybody else, right? The, the Levites, we're going to see more troubles there. Uh, Moses, Moses is wanting to, to get his people home. He wants them to be in the kingdom. And so he makes this extraordinary offer. He lays it out before God, and there it is. Uh, we're going to see say more about what happens right after. But right here, this is, this is a pretty extraordinary line. You know, take my life. If you if you can't fix this, if you can't accept this, then take my life and just just end us all. And I don't believe Moses was joking. I don't believe Moses was uh, bluffing. Moses meant it. God knew that Moses meant it. And did this did this appeal to God's heart, or did uh, was God unhappy with Moses? So I'm very thankful here that there's no softening of the sin. Moses just lays it out right as it is, and then he aligns himself with this uh, corrupt people. Please, Lord, if you can't forgive them, then just blot me out too. Those are things that are like the heart of Jesus. And so uh, let's, uh, let's seek to be faithful and true. And, and here is a pretty extraordinary example. Hey, let's tune in tomorrow morning and let's talk about God's reaction to this uh, rather extraordinary uh, plea by Moshe. All right, see you tomorrow morning.